It's the year 1998. Dawn of the internet. Moon shoes. The FDA approves Viagra. Dunkaroos. Aquemini. And the birth of the greatest thing ever conceived by the hands of man. The hands of man. I present to you 392 gifts of dancy animals. And this sound. Which is actually a sample from the song Whistle Stop from the 1973 film Robin Hood. And if you remember the album The Chipmunks Air of the Internet, you know exactly what happened here. But for now, this is Deidre LeCarte, the original creator of the Hamster Dance website back in 1998. She sat down with me for a little bit to answer a whole bunch of my dumb fucking questions. The actual creation of the page spawned from a competition to see who could generate the most web traffic, and it was between her friend Melanie, who had an art page, and her sister Hazel, who had a music page. So naturally, when those are your competitors, you make this. It's only rational, and exactly what I would have done. I didn't have anything! I didn't have anything! Right. Well, I could have done it on my cat, but yes, I had a cat and a hamster at the same time. So, um, yeah, it's just like, I don't know. They, they had already decided what they were going to do. I had no idea, and I was the one that had the computer. So the competition was supposed to end on December 31st, in which by that point, the site had only garnered around 800 visits. The next morning, however... That would not be the case at all, because in the year 1999, the term viral had absolutely nothing to do with the internet, but the hamster dance was viral as fuck. People, that's how it all started, that somebody did not have a date on New Year's Eve, and saw it, put it up on a web magazine, and it exploded. Huh. So, yeah... It's the people that don't get out much. Finding actual numbers for that morning is hard, because it was 20 fucking years ago, but it's reported at something around 30,000 visits overnight. And by June, it would be at 17 million. So there were a whole bunch of direct copies of the Hamster Dance website. And before we can elaborate on that, we have to talk about GeoCities. And if you're not 40, you're thinking, what the fuck is a GeoCities? GeoCities was a free hosting platform owned by Yahoo that shut down in 2019. Uh, free hosting sites like that have restrictions on bandwidth. So when the Hamster Dance blew up, it couldn't handle web traffic. And also with it being hosted on GeoCities, they didn't have access to the actual domain hamsterdance.com, they had a GeoCities link. Somebody else had the hamsterdance.com, so they'd copied it over and added ads. Do you remember any of the copycat sites? Oh, yes. Um, the Elder Gods. Um, oh, that's the one that sticks in my head. But there was the Pikachu site. There was the anything you could think about um they they have no i can't really name um tilted media remember that name i have tilted. that name in my notes oh yes george vukovic and i hope karma pays a visit oh it was yeah uh, was he the one that owned the actual website? Like the like the, the one that page? stole it off of my yeah. GeoCities page and made forty five thousand oh. dollars US a month off of the advertising that he never even gave me a penny. Yeah, that one. Oh, I hope that goes out because I don't know. That's not slander and it's not libel because he did it. So they created. Hamsterdance2.com, which it is still today. Growing up, because of the website, I thought that hamster was just spelled with a P. I thought that was like the actual spelling, when in fact it is not spelled like that at all. And it's because the hamster's name was Hampton. But more importantly, at this point, this is where a man called Jeffrey Lane comes into play. So I don't have a picture of Jeffrey Lane, and also I couldn't get in contact with him. So I'm going to use a picture of Akon instead. Jeffrey Lane had really big ideas for the hamster dance. He thoroughly believed that it could be more than just a silly little website. He founded Big Fun Media, where the hamster dance would be its first and only client. That wasn't the original name that he used to advertise the hamster dance, however. Uh, Jeffrey Lane. Yeah. He did do a lot of work, but I was too naive to understand that an email address ending in at bong dot com 
was anything different than it's just a word. I didn't know what bong meant. B O N G oh, no. dot com. And of course, he sent demos out to radio stations with that email address. How 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 much a reputation for a kid safe site is that? He held the carrot. He held the carrot. Okay. Here's the song. Here's the song. You won't get it. The Boontang won't do anything unless you make me a partner in your company. Oh, shit. And he was really upset when we didn't make him a voting. We just kind of gave him a little thing. He was really pissed. Yeah. Oh, yes. But he still, he still got a third of nothing. So behind their back, Jeffrey had gone and contacted the Boomtang Boys and commissioned them to write and produce a track for the Hamster Dance, which would become the officially licensed version of the Hamster Dance. This is Rob DeBoer of the Boomtang Boys. He sat down with me in portrait mode to talk about a bunch of other dumb fucking questions that I had. We were, at the time, kind of, we were like the go-to guys in Canada for dance remixes so people would come to us to like the major labels would come to us if they had an artist they were working the radio and at that time radio pop radio was pretty much dance radio so if they had a tune they wanted to get on the on the pop stations they needed a dance remix so it would come to us so right. um jeff lane who was uh hired by deidre and her partner to basically kind of manage this crazy thing that was happening with their website and develop it. Um, he knew of us through that remix work. So he, he called us up and, you know, like the context of this whole thing, right? This was like pre yeah. memes, pre, you know, we, you know, this was these, this was the days of dancing baby and all your face <laughs> and that kind of it's just stuff that spread through email and stuff. Yeah. So I can't even remember if we had, come across the Hamster Dance website at that point or not, I have a feeling maybe we hadn't seen it, and so we didn't really know what the hell this guy was talking about. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay, interesting, it's what? Okay, dancing hamsters. Uh, so basically he proposed, he, he wanted, at the time they had they had just used, as I'm sure you're aware, just the, the sped up Roger yeah. Miller uh, sample. Which they didn't have permission to use. Yeah. And I guess uh, it was probably Sony that owned the uh, the master to that recording. And they, I can't remember if they had issued a cease and desist at that point or not, but they were, they were not cool with it being used without, you know, a proper deal in place kind of thing. Yeah. So uh, when Jeff Lane called us, he wanted it, he wanted to basically have us take that sample and write a full tune around it and produce it as a dance pop dance yeah. kind of novelty track, uh, so that we could push it out. I'll tell you about the, the the original album first of all. So we basically we started out with just the single, and obviously that took off pretty quickly, and so we licensed it to. Um, in addition to ZYX in, in, for Europe, we license it to Koch or Coke. I don't know how you, I, we always call it Koch, K-O-C-H, yeah. which then became, it later became E1 Entertainment, but at the time it was Koch Records. We licensed it to them for North America, and they very quickly wanted a full album. So, like I'm talking within a few weeks. Oh. So there's no way we could have done that all ourselves. So we basically hired a bunch of our producer friends to okay you guys do two tracks you do two you do two and we that's the way we got got the full record done <sighs> so the hamster voices and production on all the rest of the songs are various uh, uh, people of our you know, that's our so friends. funny yeah. so i think it was maybe like within three weeks we had the full album ready to go <laughs> so we all, we did uh hamster party which was the follow-up single in Australia, another one that went, that did well down there was the cover of "Thank God I'm a Country Boy." Yes. That was not that that was someone else. Um, but so yeah, yeah, it was crazy uh, how that all came together so quickly. So, do you know who did the original music video for the Hamster Dance? 
Uh, it was a company in Germany called Scopus. Okay. Uh, S C O P A S. Okay. That made the video. Okay. Yeah, and that was kind. Of, again, like everything was happening so fast. Um, that was like, we didn't have anything to do with it. It was out of our hands. They just like, like, let's get it done, get it out there. I remember seeing it for the first time. Like, okay, interesting. <laughs> it's interesting. It's a video. <laughs> the, um, just why, why the cowboy theme? I have no idea. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing. Nobody really, like, nobody really knew what this thing was, right? I mean, I guess Deidre had her her vision of of what these hamsters were and yeah. the characters' names and stuff. And I don't know how much of a backstory she had for each character. But, like, literally, when we're, when we're writing the rest of the tunes for the album, like, I think in Hamster Party, we say the names of the characters. But I didn't, we didn't know anything about them. So like, what are their names? Okay, get it. <laughs> we'll worry about it later. Let's let's get this done. We'll flesh we'll flesh out these characters later. But yeah, nobody really knew what what the hell was going on. So the Boomtang Boys weren't actually the first people to chart using that sample in a song. The other was a song called Cognoscenti vs. Intelligentsia by a group called the Cuban Boys. This is Ricardo Autobahn of the Cuban Boys. He sat down with me to answer some more of my questions. It's... Can you can you pronounce it for me? Can you? Technically, no. But uh, cognoscentia versus intelligentsia. All right. Uh, my sister found the, the Hamsterdam's website out of nowhere, and it just it was the, the site we we loved. It was fun, uh, but the, that little sound snippet was just a perfect thing to sample. It was it was it was lo-fi. It was it was small enough to fit in our sample because the technology was fairly um, fairly cheap back then, mm-hmm. and not very advanced. Um, so it was a small little sample. It was easy to loop and easy to put in our machine. And we put it in and we did a track and we thought very little about it until a couple of months later when we, we sent it to John Peel. I don't know if you're aware of John Peel. No. He was, um, he's a BBC DJ and he used to play some very strange records. And he was sort of a legend in the indie uh, pop music scene. And we sent it to him, but we sent it as track three on a CDR we burnt for you because we didn't think he'd like it. But for some reason, that was the one he played, and that was the one uh, that, that sort of sparked the listener excitement. We, we, the Hamster Dance itself was kind of big by then, and we weren't really drawing attention to it on the record. It was just the, the Hamster Dance sample. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, but then it just it, it there was this perfect storm of events. It, everything everything sort of came together, and, and the nation loved it. There was there's, there's one quote from about April '99 when it got its third play on the radio. John Peel said it was the most requested song he'd ever had since "God Save the Queen" by the Sex Pistols. <laughs> which at, at that point we thought, oh, we've got a hit on our hands here, and we did. We sort of it was like um, if you see a, a, a film about a band making it big yeah and they like they, they send a tape to emi records and emi records sign them and you think that's ridiculous that can't happen that's too too stupid for words but that's pretty much exactly what did happen we, we huh. went to emi records with this tape said we've been on the radio and they signed us and we ended up making the record which came out it, it was delayed a bit so it ended up coming out at christmas mm-hmm. it came out at christmas 1999 and we had this big sort of chart battle for the for the christmas number one which is a, a big deal in the uk i'm not entirely sure whether the, the concept of the Christmas number one is particularly well known in other countries. But in Britain, the idea of having the Christmas number one is like the best number one of the year. All right. So we, had this big, we had this big battle for the Christmas number one against uh, Cliff Richard, who is a uh, sort of British showbiz legend, and Westlife, who were the biggest boy band at the time, and John Lennon, who was a dead Beatle. And us. <laughs> And that was it. And that was it. We had a massive hit, and and, and that is the entire story of the Cuban Boys. <laughs> but by about December, we were getting these strange messages from a lawyer called Jeffrey somebody. Jeffrey Lane. <laughs> Could be. On our, on, our, on our message board. And sort of, it was kind of, um, he posted these things saying, oh, I hope you've got all the, everything cleared and things. And we'd, we'd laugh and say, no, of course we haven't. <laughs> We like to 
<laughs> he likes to have a bit of a laugh sometimes. Yeah. Um, um, but he, 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 he seemed an odd character because he'd post things on our message board querying how uh, how legal our record was. And then follow-up comments would appear agreeing with him and supporting him, which we realised turned out to be posted by him himself. We could tell from the IP address. He was just replying to his own messages. Oh, no. We thought we weren't particularly concerned by this lawyer. He seemed to be a bit of a sort of a Lionel Hutz type, and um, we didn't really care. We cleared the sample with Roger Miller's bit. Roger Miller wrote the song in the first place. We cleared the sample with that, and we re-recorded the sample as well. Essentially, our song is a cover version. To be fair, if you look at the art for Cognoscenti vs. Intelligentsia, it does say worship at the altar of the hamster dance. I'm just saying. Yeah, nothing, no hamsters in the name. Yeah. And no re no references to hamsters, except on the CD cover, there was a big fucking hamster. It's not on that, but there was a sticker on it. EMI insisted we put a sticker on it referencing the hamster dance. Yeah, I was wondering about we that. Said, we said, um, a worship at the altar of the hamster dance. It was kind of, uh, trying to be, again, trying to be a bit funny and weird. And it was the only reference to the hamster dance on the whole physical product. And I think we almost got into trouble for that. But by the time anybody cared enough, I think the whole thing was over and it was, yeah. it was clear there was no there was no way of um, suing us to any great extent. There's a solid amount of tension when discussing the Cuban boys, uh, especially if you go back to old articles uh, like this one called The Cuban Boys Stole My Hamsters, where uh, the Cuban boys had contacted Deidre and asked her to write a blurb and post it on her website advertising their song. Which is really fucking funny. The response quote says, My martial arts code forbids violence. It's at this point that I should mention that Deidre was a martial arts instructor. And in the summer of 2000, the officially licensed hamster dance would release. And become a number one hit. So at this point, everything's fucked up. What the fuck is a hamster dance? Is this? Is this? Is the song? Is this? It's a complicated answer at this point in the story. Uh, for legal reasons to protect the IP, Hampton Hamster Productions was formed, which was then sold to a baddest international, which created a slew of other problems, which they still own the property today. This is when we bring in a man called Bill Porfido, who I also could not find contact information for, so I'm using a picture of Danny DeVito instead. He's the president of a baddest international. The sale to a baddest was a fucking mess. When we sold our company, Hampton Hamster Productions yes. for the database of over a million unique email addresses because they didn't actually know what they were buying. It's in one of the articles. Oh. So that's what they bought. At this point, they still didn't have the rights to hamsterdance.com, so they sold hamsterdance2.com, which it is still today. <laughs> What's really funny is that the Hamsterdance song appears absolutely nowhere on the site because they never sold it. And honestly, like where where it still is doing the most business is through Hallmark. So we've had a deal oh, yeah. with Hallmark for for a long time. And so they've got the thing in all kinds of products. Like originally it was just uh, like greeting cards that you open it up and it plays a bit of the song. But it's like, yeah, I don't even know what all product lines they have it in plots. Huh. And the crazy thing is, you know, when we get statements from them, sometimes I sort of dig around and see, okay, like, who's bought, like, you know, I guess the nostalgia factor is there. That people like, oh, yeah, that song, <laughs> they buy it in a card, which is, and I'm glad they do. But the funny thing is, the bulk of the sales seem to be from, like, military bases. Interesting. Yeah, which I thought was fascinating, because I guess, all right, so... Like, first of all, who buys cards anymore? Well, I guess people that are stationed away from their families and want to have something physical to send instead of just emailing and stuff. Like, I guess I guess that's the appeal. So Hallmark must have, like, their own stores set up on military bases to sell this stuff. But it's, yeah, that, that took me by surprise. That is surprising. Kind of interesting. Uh, according to Deidre, the actual royalties from the sale to Abadis came out to an earth-shattering $4.36. With the contract when we signed, they were supposed to pay us royalties? Yes. I have never received one single... No, I lied. 
It was $4.36, and I think my ex-wife has the receipt of it. Oh. $4.36 in royalties. As far as merchandising and actually expanding on the Hamster Dance brand post a baddest sale, not much was actually done. They put out a couple more albums that were illegal and unsuccessful. Uh, but we had in our contract with Deidre and her partners um, basically a clause that said we, we had a uh, right of first refusal on any future hamster music, which mm -hmm. means if anyone's making any more hamster dance recordings, they got to call us first. Well, the guys that bought the property from them didn't. They just threw that in the garbage and went <laughs> He basically, uh, the, the guy hired his cousin to do a bunch of new music for it or something, and they, they just started doing their own thing and just cut us out of the loop completely. But uh, to my knowledge, none of that stuff ever did any, huh. any got any, it didn't get any traction. Except for the one thing that did materialize, which is a straight-to-DVD animated film called How the Hamsters Saved Winter. I've been looking for this thing for fucking months. And the only lead that I have is off the dead Hamster Dance Twitter account, where the guy says that they have some, but he won't respond, and he hasn't responded to anything in use. What's funny is it's listed as for sale on the website. You can't buy it. It's not even listed on IMDb. The only thing that I have are these little screenshots of it that somebody else dug up. The website hasn't actually been updated since 2008, and the copyright hasn't been updated since 2012. So Abattis did do some kind of strange things to try to market the hamster dance further after their sale. Like, they made a whole hamster band that you can find on the meet and greet portion of their website, where you can see some fun facts about them, but you can even email your favorite member of the hamster band. Because Flash Player is dead, and the site hasn't been touched since I was nine years old, a lot of it simply does not work. The website does not work. And that's how it sits. The hamster dance is one big dead meme. Because the hamster dance is what it is, there's a whole bunch of fan-made community content. Like, here it is played on Guitar Hero. Here's a Beat Saber. Uh, here it is played in a bathroom stall, Yo, which is a really fucking funny video. I love the hamster dance living in obscurity the way that it is, because it's so niche. Other than the fact that the song's a fucking banger, it's so fucking good. It's it's so fucking good. Because it's a perfect hit. It's, it's brilliant. It's not, it's not trying to be too clever. It's not trying to be overly odd it's a brilliant brilliant pop version of the track and it's the one obviously that everybody sort of yeah. um knows nowadays it's the one that's been family guy and stuff like that and um it's 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 um it's a work of art quite frankly this actually all started because the hamster dance appeared on my discover weekly on spotify and i thought it would be really really funny if i listened to it for like 90 fucking hours and then made it my most streamed song of all time which i did without cheating because letting it play while you sleep is cheating so why stop there? Why stop at wasting a whole bunch of my time and degrading my mental state and not know everything about the hamster dance ever? Are you still sane? Is that oh, why yeah. you're talking to me? Whether or not you want to find out whether or not what, if I'm on lithium or a Ritalin, <laughs> semi-psychotic drugs. I, sure. Oh my God. I found that they did a vinyl run, which I purchased. They didn't really run any merchandise or toys or anything past the actual release of the DVD film. They did have a toy fair, which was pre abattis sale, that was stocked with toy hamsters that never went to market. If you look around on eBay, you can find a bunch of bootleg scene hamsters circa 2003. They were made by a company called Jemmy, and Jemmy has some massive fucking partners, but the hamster dance is not one of them. So because they didn't actually make any merchandise, I decided to make my own. I'd like to thank all of my Patreon subscribers for making this video possible. That's funny because I made the joke in my last video, and also I have 19 subscribers total.